evaluator, Bob Avaloni. And Bob, you can just stand in place and uh, tell us about uh, what uh, Harvey is trying to do with this speech. Yes, I'd be happy to do that. This is speech number, project number four from the Common Communicator book. How to say it, and its objectives are to select the right word and sentence structure to communicate your ideas clearly, accurately, and vividly. Use rhetorical devices to enhance and emphasize ideas. Eliminate jargon and unnecessary words. Use correct grammar, which Mary will find as well. And the name of this speech is Around the Campfire. Around the Campfire. had them over for dinner. And when they came in, Chang saw Lin's Mahjong set laid out on the table. And he was kind of surprised. He said, what are you doing with a Mahjong set? So Lin explained that Jewish women in America play Mahjong. So soon they were engaged in a deep conversation about how the game is played in China and how American Jewish women play the game. And after a dinner, we sat and talked for a while, and we told them that we were planning a trip to Zion National Park. Fei and Shang said that they too wanted to go to Zion and asked if we couldn't go together. So a month later, there we were, camping in a canyon in Zion National Park. And we fell into a routine. I would do breakfast, coffee, eggs, bacon, and bread fried in the bacon fat, or pancakes. And Pofei would cook rice in a bamboo steamer which would keep it warm all day. And in the evening, Shang and Pofei would make a Chinese stir fry. Well, after dinner one night, uh, we had a campfire. And it was just the most amazing night. There was no moon, and the, the whole sky was filled with stars. And the Milky Way stretched from one side of the canyon to the other. And as we were sitting around the campfire, Pofei said, tonight is the Chinese festival of level seven. And then she told the story that the goat herd star and the weaver girl star fell in love, but that love was forbidden by the heavenly goddess. I'm sorry, heavenly empress. And they were forbidden to see each other. But after a while, the heavenly empress took pity on them and said that they could see each other one day a year on the seventh day of the seventh month, the double seventh. And then she pointed out the star Vega, which was the goat herd star, and then she pointed out Altar, the weaver girl star, and there they were together in the sky that one night. And then Shang said to me, uh, tell a Jewish story. <laughs> so I thought about telling a story about Helm. Helm is a town of fools but who believed they had great wisdom. So one day the townspeople asked Shlomil to go out into the world and share the wisdom of Helm. So he heads off, and at night, he lays down his shoes, pointing in the direction he was going, so that when he woke up, he wouldn't be confused as to where he's headed. And a trickster comes along, sees the shoes, and turns them around. 
The Shmuel gets up and he heads off in the direction of the shoe, the uh, shoes are pointing, and he comes to Helm. But he is amazed. He thinks it's another town, identical to Helm. All the people are the same. And then it, when his wife rushes up to him, he's astonished there's even a woman that looks exactly like his own wife. And the townspeople can't convince him that he is in calm. So in desperation, they say, send him off again. And again he goes off, and again comes nighttime. He lays his shoes down in the direction he's headed. The trickster comes along, turns it around, and he heads off and he arrives in Helm, thinking he's back home to the joy of all the town's peace. So we finished our stories and meanwhile the fire had died down. It was just embers. We could barely see each other's faces. And then Ophay and Shang started to tell us about how they had suffered under the Japanese occupation. And then Lynn and I talked about the relatives that we had lost in the Holocaust. And then we fell silent, each with our own thoughts. And so all I can say is, while our stories were different, our tears were the same.